Courtney began the season here at Wembley as referee in the Charity Shield. Match you may have seen the highlights on BBC television. Arsenal were here then against Liverpool and he ends the season at Wembley as the cup final referee. Just to remind you again of the colours, which may not be familiar to all of you, Arsenal are playing in their yellow shirt that they wore in the last two cup finals, and West Ham are playing all in white. Both teams have changed from their normal strip, and Arsenal in the first half will play from the left. The first FA Cup final of the 1980s starts with Liam Brady on the ball. John Devine gets his first touch. This is Willie Young looking for Rice, the captain and modern inspiration of this Arsenal side. David O'Leary, the back four all getting an early feel of the ball. And Brady wanting to take over as he did so often last year. West Ham yet to touch the ball. Here's O'Leary. Torbert back to Rice. Still Arsenal retain possession. That's uh, Graham Ricks with a very severe haircut offside against Liam Brady. Brady very well forward in that attack. And little Paul Allen went back there to get his first touch. Ray Stewart playing at right back. Brooking, number 10. Stewart. That's Stewart Pearson. Trying to get Jeff Pike away, and David O'Leary cut it off. by Alan Devonshire for West Ham then by David Cross Brooking goes in with Willie Young that's Alvin Martin the West Ham centre half now Stewart Cross making a run and Young comes across here's Price for Arsenal Brady where he likes to be picking it up in the inside left position Stapleton here comes Price lost control but he made the first goal last year remember David Price often a very underrated player Lampard Pearson Devonshire what can he do now on the left side for West Ham they've got high hopes of him here's Cross this is Brooking now it's Stewart and now Bonds Young was there Allen ran away slightly but it found Cross and he tries a shot I know how pleased he is to be here, David Cross. Not many people realised he was on 16 points. He was frightened of being booked in the last league game. Or one of the last league games. Here's Brady. Stapleton. And Bonds having a bit of difficulty against Sunderland, but finally getting the important touch. Sporting moment there, and that sounds to me from the fans as well, this final could be played in a very good spirit. We certainly hope so. Brooking. Martin. And Bonds, the man whose leadership is so important for West Ham. Willie Young. Hasn't put a foot wrong recently. Certainly didn't in the semi-final. This is Lampard. Well, Alan will enjoy the early feel of the ball and the chance to make a little bit of space for himself. That was Cross. This is Brooking. That's Stewart on the far side. And Jeff Pike is playing well out on the right. That's him now.
fairly measured start the pace a little slack at the beginning as the players get the feel of the pitch and the atmosphere this is uh, Lampard Rooking oh that's nicely done Stuart Pearson great touch Rooking Pike on the far side three others in attack found some room for Pearson and let's get an early view from the man with me in the commentary box Jimmy Hill all very stylish and careful John rather like the opening round in a boxing match both sides feeling each other out they're determined not to throw the right game away in in any way at all very careful very cagey everybody getting a feel of the ball no points either way yet be hearing from uh, Jimmy Hill throughout the match but for the moment it's Alvin Martin beating Frank Stapleton Talbot for Arsenal Price Rice Talbot Ricks he really looks different now that his uh, afro hairstyle has been abandoned Graham Ricks <laughs> there goes Stapleton with bonds West Ham weren't overawed, uh, Jimmy, in the semi-final, and they probably determined not to be today. No, there are no real signs of nerves yet from either side. And uh, there are signs, a lot of style, and already I've seen a couple of first-time passes that uh, were really enjoyable, and that's really why we're all here today, to enjoy a game of football. And West Ham can normally be relied upon to provide some style. And so in their wake and Arsenal. That's Stapleton, but that's Martin. O'Leary backpedalling a bit. Not a particularly good header. This is Talbot, who's normally to be found just about everywhere. Especially at Wembley. He wants the ball all the time, Talbot, whether he's defending or attacking. Rick's coming inside now. Stapleton, nice turn. But Allen pestered him and halted the attack and then he fouled him so a free kick to Arsenal and they're going to push Willie Young forward it's taken quickly here's Brady out on the left is John Devine but West Ham have closed the space down Brady goes inside Stapleton Brady didn't get a shot on that properly but he is pushing forward Liam Brady people often say he plays too deep not too much danger of that there Pike for West Ham Brooking, Cross, Willie Young, Sunderland, Torbett on the left wing, this is Brady. Ricks, Sunderland. Arsenal trying to draw the defenders and a free kick given against Alvin Martin for a foul on David Price. taken by Brady and an easy one for Phil Parks the sort of cross he'll appreciate early on going to be very very hot out there this afternoon that's absolutely certain Brady oh looks for Stapleton what about that for a ball Martin shadowing him Ricks is coming in support and the first corner O'Leary and Young have both made their way forward here's Devine low in and off Trevor Brooking shoving by David Price free kick to West Ham Brooking the elegant inside forward they would call him of the old school lit up many a winter's day in the East End and played well at Wembley too. David Cross underneath this. So was Willie Young. Here's Alan Devonshire. Hasn't had much of a chance to get into the game yet, Devonshire. Talbot is occupying this side of the midfield for Arsenal. Sunderland. In the way, Martin, the big centre-half. Now Bonds. Devonshire. 
to the left, Pearson and Cross. Bonds following up, Pike. Outside him, Ray Stewart. Devonshire. Stewart. Devonshire. Licks his tackle, runs free to Sunderland. Loses it to Devonshire. Stewart. Pearson. Off O'Leary, corner to West Ham. Martin on his way forward. And the referee spots some pushing by David Cross. incidentally are playing their 26th cup match of the season and their 67th match in all there's Pat Rice with the energy in this team quite fantastic West Ham really must try and match Arsenal's running and pressure game and if they can impose their own skills above that here's Stewart Pike Pearson trying to stay on side. As Arsenal pushed forward, that's a free kick. That's Ricks on the far side. Committing the foul. Here's Allen. Martin. Stewart. Just slightly lost control there, Ray Stewart, but he was strong enough to win the ball. Tries to get Jeff Pike away, and uh, John Devine covering well for Arsenal. Making a solid start. That was a flick on by Sunderland, that's what West Ham have got to watch, the combination between Sunderland and Stapleton. Lampard. Pearson, oh, what a burst of pace from him, pulled it right back, Jeff Pike coming in, what a good save by Pat Jennings, nice snapshot by Jeff Pike, the ball was pulled back behind the men who'd gone in first, and Pike came in behind them, and Jennings, mentally and physically, so sharp and so agile, first true shot of the match, and it was well struck too, on target, O'Leary for Arsenal. Looking for Stapleton, Sunderland. And West Ham can break here with Brooking. Pearson who made the earlier move. Devonshire. Oh, Devonshire's round the back. Oh, right across, it's free. Driven in. Is it a goal? It is! Brooking! Trevor Brooking! The ball ricocheted in off him and West Ham are in front. Alan Devonshire made it possible. The ball over to the far side of the goal. In they came, trying to make contact and watch number 10 Brooking. He scored from inside the six-yard box and West Ham are in front. second division side have taken the lead in 13 minutes and that's the very thing as Jimmy Hill was saying earlier that this cup final wanted the underdogs to score first and John Lyle he may be smoking quietly but what a start for his side Brady tries for <laughs> well that's really made this cup final come to life and Arsenal, the holders, find themselves a goal down, and it was scored at almost the same time as they opened the scoring last year against Manchester United. Yeah. 
So, 15 minutes gone, Arsenal nil, West Ham won, Trevor Brooking, the idol of the East End, gives West Ham the lead. Lampard. That long kick could pose a few problems. That's Sunderland wrestling with Bonds. Here's Talbot. Brady. And Allen is getting at Brady all the time. They've obviously told him to watch him very closely, the two number sevens. Allen is penalised there for the foul on Brady. And Arsenal look for a way back now. Stapleton, offside I would have thought. I don't think that would have counted. The linesman on my side was flagging. Just watch it again here, see if you can spot the player in the offside position. It's flicked in and there is an Arsenal player there on the right of your picture who are definitely straight ahead of the defence. So, Arsenal nil, West Ham one. the noise you can hear coming from the West Ham fans at the right-hand end of the ground. Won't be long now, I'm sure, before we hear the first strains of I'm Forever Blowing Bubbles. Jimmy. Well, that was a tremendous goal, and you've got to give the credit to Alan Devonshire because he had the courage and the ability to run at the defence. Pat Rice backed off him, gave him the chance to get in that cross. He didn't waste it. It was a beautifully judged cross. Pat Jennings struggled to get it, touched it on, but from then on, all West Ham had to do was finish, and Brooking did that beautifully. And made the score 1-0 to the underdogs from the second division. And that could make the rest of this cup final even more interesting than it promised to be originally. Stuart Pearson for West Ham. Sunderland, Ricks. Jeff Pike is playing very much on the right-hand side for West Ham. Maybe to help block the runs of Brady and Ricks on Arsenal's left. Here's Brady. And Ricks is behind him. That's the problem for West Ham, to shut them down. There's Pike with Ricks now. Free kick given to Arsenal. Lifted a long way over by Ricks, almost, well, it was too far, this is Young. Corbett takes the throw for Arsenal. Well, they're known as a side of tremendous resilience, never knowing when they're beaten, so it's very, very early in the day to start talking about West Ham having an advantage. That was Sunderland. O'Leary goes in, chunks for Stapleton maybe, handball was it? This is Corbett with the shot blocked. A West Ham arm appeared to make contact. Cross for West Ham, who've got two players free. And this is dangerous. This is Pearson. It's still Pearson trying to find Cross on the far side. And Arsenal are still having a little word with the referee off the ball about an incident in the far penalty area when the ball could have struck an arm. This is Sunderland. be intentional of course for uh, the referee to give a penalty you might just see a little glimpse of it here as Stapleton turns on the ball well harsh to call that intentional hands I would have thought and nothing was given the referee was quite happy and he had a good view as well Ricks Brady
Devine. And West Ham, with the incentive of this early lead, throwing themselves into the tackles now and denying Arsenal space. 20 minutes gone, 1-0 to West Ham. Here's Young. Stapleton. Brady is very busy and very involved. Talbot. Sunderland. Talbot tries to get the return. Beautifully done by Ray Stewart. So composed that the pass wasn't. Ricks. A drive by Ricks and Parks couldn't hold it and Billy Bonds was on hand. Ricks getting terrific power in the left foot. As you'll see from this, he really drove it and Parks found it too hot to hold, but Billy Bonds was there. Price for Arsenal. Oh, Brady's well forward again. Trying to find Sunderland, it's gone free, Bonds. And again, Rooking. Rooking a lovely little ball, that was a joy to watch. Allen to Stewart. Now Pike. Well, people said Rooking would be a factor, and look at this, he's been obstructed, but he's got the advantage played by the referee. David Cross, Pearson's in the penalty area. Rooking again. Played for Stewart. Cross, Rooking, they're in no hurry. Ball to the far post for Pearson to jump with O'Leary. Free kick to Arsenal, Jimmy Hill. Well, it was a delight to watch that skill of Trevor Brooking coming forward there. The disputed handball, I think 99 referees out of 100 would have waved play on, as uh, George Courtney did there, because the ball struck the arm from, well, less than a yard. So there's no question the right decision there. So Torbett for Arsenal to Brady. is Young and this is O'Leary it's a very hard job to shake Arsenal out of their stride and even though West Ham have the lead we can look forward to Arsenal's organised game coming forward Sunderland to Stapleton and in the way was Bonds Brooking David Price had just chased back there to make the interception. This is Young. That's a good ball. Talbot. Sunderland is through the centre. Stapleton is there also. Still Talbot. Ricks wants it on the far side. Here's Price. Driven in low. Stapleton. This is Price with the shot. Arsenal pushing forward and David Price off target. the Arsenal fans determined to lift their side after that early shot. Young. That was ahead of our little Allen who's accustomed himself to Wembley so quickly. Devonshire's enjoying it as well, and nobody more than Brooking who's all over the field. Here he is again now. Pike has switched to the left for a moment. Yes. David Cross. And ball against Young was the appeal, but the referee was well placed. And here's O'Leary. That's Ricks looking for Sunderland on the chase. Billy Barnes, the defender, trying to cover. And cover he did at the expense of a corner. be more of a right-footed player, although he's playing left-back. And the two crosses so far that Arsenal have put in have been easy meat for Phil Parks. Cross. Stewart. Brady. 
Don't give the ball away to him too often there or you'll be in trouble. That's the message. This is Talbot. But West Ham getting their tackles in so quickly that they've got room to develop the play in the middle of the field. Ricks has gone over to the right now. Talbot is in some space. Sunderland looking for Talbot. Brooking is now in defence. Look at that for a classic piece of play by the England midfield player. He saw Talbot attacking and went back to mark him. Young's header. Price. Pearson thought that Price handled it. Stapleton. Oh, and Stapleton battled superbly and got a free kick against Alvin Martin, who I suspect obstructed him there. And the referee's signal is very clear. It's indirect. And he raises the arm again to make the point. Brady to Ricks. Devonshire slid in. Referee said play on. Brooking could put Devonshire through. He's got a run on if he can beat the last man, but the last man is O'Leary, and you don't beat him very often when it's one against one. There's Devine. Torbert has pushed very far forward in this attack. He's got no chance of getting there. Well, the hold is a goal down, Jimmy. How do you see the pattern of the game from here on? Well, I think it's given Arsenal a chance to show what kind of team they really are because there have been all sorts of little clouded hints about them being defensive and things like that. When you're one down in the cup final, <laughs> you've got to prove whether you've got the ability to create chances and get back in the game. And it's fascinating to see them trying to do it. Talbot, the man who will surely have the character to keep Arsenal moving at all times. He finds Young. Stapleton looking for Sunderland, but he wasn't anywhere near that. And West Ham, who've often been accused of being fragile in defence, have settled down at the back quickly and efficiently. Here's Allen. Pearson oh, avoided Brady's challenge and looked for Devonshire. Put that down superbly. Two to beat. Oh, he's turned one of them, but not the second. Here's Brooking. Handball, was it? Yes. That was Brady using his arm to cut the ball out. Free kick to West Ham. Stewart. Oh, Cross is in there. Willie Young got a touch on it, and it was offside, I would have thought, against Cross. It wasn't much in it, but I think you'll find he was offside. Just look at it again uh, as he goes in there. The flag picked out David Cross. It wouldn't have stood. Cross was offside. About 28 minutes gone. West Ham, the second division side, in the lead. Thanks to Trevor Brooking. ball now another arm in the way but it was West Ham's advantage and Brooking is enjoying this first half so is little Allen as well Devonshire crosses in the centre being joined by Pearson this is uh, Lampard and Arsenal having to defend in numbers and the way back to the keeper was cut off it was nicely done by Price and that's a foul climbing by uh, Alvin Martin. That's something that referees, I think, get wrong more than any, th any other decision. There, Alvin Martin went for the ball from start to finish. He was the player who played the ball, and I don't think that was a foul in any circumstance. But Arsenal got a free kick out of it, and they have possession with Divine. Ricks. Divine again. Billy Bonds reading the play as he does so well. Stuart Pearson's had some nice touches early on. Jeff Pike working hard on the right. This is a fine team effort so far by West Ham of the second division. Foul though by Devonshire pushing Price. Brady. 
Kearney. The young. Stapleton. Fifteen minutes to go in the first half. Lampard for West Ham. The cross. Roy Stewart on the far side has seen plenty of the ball. Here's Stuart Pearson. Devonshire holds. Devonshire's control just for once let him down and he had to work hard to win the ball back. But look how well he succeeded. Crosses ahead of him. A bit close though to play the ball to him there. And Arsenal have more numbers. Brady. And Devonshire forced to defend and Brady's passed him. He's got Rice on this side. Sunderland and Stapleton waiting in the centre. Brady. Rice. Sunderland. Rice goes again away by Martin for a corner. Pat Rice joined the attack there so intelligently. And he'll leave the corner for Ricks to come across and swing it in with his left foot. Rice. Ricks again. Oh, that's wasted really by Graham Ricks. A little slack of West Ham there. They left two against one players at that corner really, which enabled Ricks to get into quite a favourable position before he let go of that shot. And, uh, that's unusual these days, when uh, two men are at a corner, the defence nearly always put another one out alongside him. And there's the injured player on the floor there, Alan Devonshire. I was just thinking, John, that to West Ham's commitment seems to be uh, just a little more total than Arsenal's. I mean, when Alan Devonshire lost that ball just now, he was so determined to win it back. And uh, on that basis, I think that's what's given them the edge, John. A few worried expressions now on the bench, though, because Alan Devonshire has clearly got a knock after doing some defensive work there, as Jimmy was saying. And Rob Jenkins, the West Ham physio, familiar figure at the club, his father was physio before him, has some work to do now on the pitch. Devonshire recently called up by Ron Greenwood after a quite outstanding season. He made the goal, and uh, Terry Neal taking the chance to get some instructions out to his side or a goal behind. It's Wilf Dixon with his head in his hands. Don Howe is the man in between them, who we just got a glimpse of a minute ago. And Paul Brush, who was a uh, little unfortunate to be left out of the side, is warming up just in case. Devonshire's now had his shin plastered. But don't forget that Alan Devonshire does wear uh, pads, not just on his shin, but also on his ankle. One of those players who gets so many kicks that he actually has a special padding on both ankles. indeed has had uh, ankle and shin injuries in recent Cobbles back into action. There are 12 minutes left in the first half of the 1980 Cup final and West Ham lead Arsenal by one goal to nil. That was uh, Stapleton trying to find Ricks and did so. Do it across. Here's Brady. This is Divine. Sunderland goes in, away by Bonds. Not so far though, Talbot. Elephant defence here by West Ham. Talbot again. Uh, Rice, this is. At Rice. Billy Bonds across, the two captains in close contention. Here's Willie Young. Still plenty of Arsenal shirts forward here. But again, the cross goes far too near the goalkeeper. Pearson. Well, you can't blame players if they conserve energy on a day like this because it's very hot out there. And that may play a part in the second half. Here's Lampard for West Ham. Devonshire. Young. 
Well, that's nicely done by Willie Young. Brooking got back, and Price ran the ball out. What a half Brooking's had it. He's there about to take the throw, but he's been prominent, not just in attack where he scored the goal, but also in defence. That's Stuart Pearson, who's uh, just given the ball away there to Corbett. That's a foul, though. Devonshire on Corbett. Free kick to Arsenal. And Pearson got a crack on the knee, I think, when that ball ran on. After the foul had actually been given, Pearson got hurt in the next challenge. Might have been a bit higher than the knee, I don't know. Anyway, here's Corbett. Sliding it through to Stapleton. Ricks. have had two of them to beat and it's a throw to Arsenal Sunderland's flick on that was Devonshire shot by Young and well over but is it a corner? I think there was a slight deflection on that corner to Arsenal just see there there was a deflection off a West Ham player Alan Sunderland who got the touch, he got in in front of Willie Young but the header went wide just see as Willie Young comes in at the back, you'll see Sunderland sneak in front of Willie Young here and get the touch on the ball good header that for a smaller man by Alan Sunderland cross Young to Sunderland and Pearson's gone down for the uh, not Pearson this time but it's Arsenal on the attack in fact while all that was going on Paul Allen was left on the ground with an injury seems to be alright though Free kick then to Arsenal. Indirect, Brady. Oh, Alvin Martin did well, isn't it? A foul by Willie Young. That's dangerous play when a player lifts his foot and the other man goes to head the ball. So one indirect free kick led to another there. Willie Young, the offender. Head and Jennings is coming for this and making it as usual. Corbett. Nice. West Ham fans with their bubble song as Arsenal attack with David Price. Bent in nicely. Stapleton was holding him off and it's a free kick there. That's a foul by Stapleton on the defender. Clearly held his man trying to let the ball go on that song I'm forever blowing bubbles has been a familiar one at West Ham's Upton Park ground for so many years indeed a recent program at West Ham informed us that that song started in 1926 but in 1980 the Hammers as they're known leading Arsenal by a goal to nil in the cup final and Billy Bonds with his socks rolled down We'll be happy to see that state of affairs continue until half-time. Here's Paul Allen.
Divine Braiding. Talbot has been demanding the ball from the other Arsenal players and not getting it. That's Stapleton. Away by Devonshire. O'Leary didn't time that terribly well. Willie Young was behind him. Well, there haven't been very many scoring chances in this first half, but the one that West Ham had, they took. And it's down to Arsenal now to come out and do something about it. Price. Well played by David Price. Got the shot in. Hit Alvin Martin. Ricks. Early ball was good. Off brooking it came to Talbot. Brady. Forced to go out wide, but he's got Ricks. Talbot's in there. Allen, a nice little ball out of defence by 17-year-old Paul Allen. That was Pearson finding Pike, and that's where West Ham are calm. They don't get ruffled in possession, even in the back third of the field. Pearson. Little touch off again, so elegant. Neat football. Which down the years has been the West Ham trademark. But this Arsenal machine that's ground on this season through so many fixtures, overcome so many setbacks, you really can't start to rule them out. Cross. Brooking. Cross again. Pike. Brooking, the goal scorer. Pike again. Little cross in for Stuart Pearson to jump. He got a knockback on it. Devonshire came in. What a good dive in there by Talbot, I think. This is Lampard. Well, it's, uh, it's turning into a most interesting contest, really. Arsenal searching for that opportunity there, forcing players forward. When Talbot was calling for the ball just now, you saw him and shot there. They, they think, I think, that he has the best chance of breaking through and losing Trevor Brooking because they have a sort of man-to-man -man contact going on in the middle of the field there and I think they feel that his running power is the man that, that, that might enable him to break loose and create that spare man and the chance they so desperately need. There's some more views from uh, Jimmy Hill and Laurie McManamy at half time but for the moment it's Brady for Arsenal who are trailing 1-0. Talbot, Brady again. Great run by Brady that but he ran out of room in the end and ran into Bonds. And Brady then fouled Bonds. Didn't like the decision by referee George Courtney. It just shows the competitive nature of the Arsenal team. again looking for Pearson O'Leary Divine on the far side that's Sunderland and Bonds on for Stapleton but the whistle's already gone a foul by Bonds on Sunderland Taken by Ricks, header away by Lampard, here's O'Leary, Ricks, Divine, trying to take on Ray Stewart, little ball in for Sunderland, it's running on to Brooking, no one's played better than him in the first half, Ricks, oh what a great run by Brian Talbot, Stapleton is actually the target but Talbot's there too, Turned in by Brady, Price with a chance to turn, it's running loose, and West Ham were a little bit fortunate, it ran away from the two Arsenal players, and booking now for West Ham on the break, with a minute left in the first half, gains ground and time for the second division side, he's got two players square, and that's a fine ball to Devonshire, O'Leary is in the way, Devonshire again, and now Brady. Brady there just used all his know-how to just shake them off and start something for Arsenal. Ricks, oh, didn't last very long. This is Young, though. Rice. 
Rice. Four players forward for Arsenal at the moment, including Torbert. This is Ricks. He'll bring Divine into it. Oh, and Divine did well. The cross was pulled too far back with his left foot, but it's given West Ham the chance to exploit the space which Divine has left. It's been filled by O'Leary for the moment and by Young. So Divine can stay forward, but he can't reach that. We're up to the 45-minute mark. George Courtney just adding on a few seconds, no doubt, for the two injuries we've had. But West Ham lead by the only goal of the match. Talbot will find Rice, Arsenal building up in their usual considered style, that was well left by Stapleton, Sunderland played the flick on, and Frank Lampard getting back. We've played a minute of time added on for stoppages at the end of the first half, but Arsenal on the attack, with Price to Talbot. Lightman is flat, I suspect that's an offside, and indeed as it was, George Courtney blew anyway for half-time and a vast roar goes up from the tunnel end because Trevor Brooking's goal means that West Ham lead at half-time scored in the 13th minute, unlucky for Arsenal but West Ham from the second division started the match in positive fashion and they got an early reward for that and since then their defence has coped admirably with what Arsenal have done The West Ham players coming off at the end where their supporters are congregated and Arsenal striding off a little more slowly and thoughtfully perhaps, wondering if here they've reached a point where Terry Neal and Don Howe will have to lift them yet again as they've done so often this season because at half-time in the 1980 Cup Final Arsenal are trailing the second division side West Ham by one goal to nil day for this cup final and David Cross who I was talking to last night at the West Ham Hotel I've known him for many years actually since he was at Norwich and he was saying to me just how determined the West Ham lads were to enjoy the day win or lose and as Billy Bonds walks out with him they must have thought at half time in the dressing room just how well things have gone for them so far leading by a goal to nil and Trevor Brooking who celebrates his 500th senior match for West Ham this weekend scores the goal which in a way is a fitting testament to the marvellous career he's had for them. Whether it will be the winning goal or not remains to be seen because these Arsenal players have pulled themselves back from difficult positions so often this season against Juventus and the likes of that that with Pat Rice inspiring them the way he does and lifting people the way he can you really must never rule Arsenal out. That's the message I'm sure that John Lyle has passed to the West Ham players because with this sort of motivation and that of Don Howe, their coach, Arsenal can be quite capable of turning this match round. As it is, West Ham will start the second half. West Ham themselves are playing their 58th match of the season. They've been involved in two long cut runs as well as the second division programme. And John Lyle and Eddie Bailey, his assistant, making their way to the bench as the second half starts. And Bonds had to be quick there. Price for Arsenal. Brady. Pat Rice has gone outside him. Little ball in for Sunderland. Bonds is watching it. Back to Rice, though. Devonshire, there was a half-hearted appeal for handball over there. And the ball played forward, looking for David Cross. This is Brooking, and West Ham again have got players forward very quickly. Devonshire. Brady. Now, can Brady engineer the sort of openings that Arsenal didn't find in the first half? This is O'Leary. 
Sunderland, not a very good ball from him. And Billy Barnes might have been a bit strong on Pat Rice. In fact, I think it was six of one and half a dozen of the other, but West Ham will get the free kick. If there is one, I think it may even be a throw-in. The referees signalled for a free kick. The linesman went for the throw-in, but a free kick has, in fact, been given. So it's uh, Lampard for West Ham, looking for Cross. It's a fair ball, but Cross has got nobody up with him yet. Really wanted Pearson a bit closer to him there, David Cross. This is Ray Stewart. Not a good header. Brady, though, was beaten by Paul Allen. Stuart Pearson in the tackle. That was Talbot working very hard to find some way through. Sunderland for Arsenal. Talbot is still well forward here. Talbot's in the box with the header on. Stapleton trying to reach it. And Jeff Pike settled for safety. Now the Arsenal crowd get behind the FA Cup holders. Divine. Header away by Lampard, over the head of Willie Young to Pearson. Pike. Pike trying to turn against uh, Brady, who kept the pressure on. Stewart played it quickly, and Young found O'Leary. Divine. Ricks, Sunderland. Oh, that was beautifully done. Ricks against Stewart. Still Ricks with the shot. Oh, good save. It had to be a save, too. It was curling into the far corner, I think. And Phil Parks got down so well. Graham Ricks there with a superb piece of individual skill and enterprise. And it was bending, wasn't it, before Parks turned it round. Ricks has gone across now to take the corner. Young was up, so was Rice, but this is where West Ham can break sometimes, Devonshire, oh look at Tor, but he's got so much energy to ward off that counter thrust. Another tremendous piece of running by this man, Brian Torbert. Sunderland chasing, handball was it by Sunderland, I thought it was. all London crowd now the Cockney Cup final as they watch intensely from the bench the supporters vying with each other to see who can win the battle on the terraces and West Ham they're in good voice at the moment with their side still leading 1-0 Allen oh that might be a bit awkward but Parks saw what was going to happen and I must say Allen has refused to be overawed by the occasion and that was the case with Kendall here in 64. He played ever so well for Preston. I well remember that game. Cross and Rice. This is Lampard. And now it's Brooking. Came off David Price. Five minutes gone in the second half but when you think back to last year's cup final so much happened in the last five minutes that day that it's still very early in the afternoon to start talking about who's going to win the cup west ham though have still got that lead of one goal here's bonds peels for offside given against pierce o'leary for arsenal who've got a draw now yet again on these Huge reserves of strength that have served them so well. Sunderland. Price. Stapleton, nicely done. Price shoots! And not too far away from here anyway. David Price has had three shots at goal so far, and this one coming up as the ball was nicely played back to him by Stapleton, flew wide of the left-hand post. The Park's left-hand post, that is see a better view probably from behind the goal of how far away it actually was nice layback by Stapleton Price's shot flying away from that post 
Pearson to Lampard. And Devonshire, I think it is on the ground again. That's his second injury, if it is. And Price goes down. That'll be a free kick anyway. Alan Devonshire's twice taken a fairly heavy knock. But as he limps back, he's going to need a stitch or two after the game in the original injury, I understand. This is Talbot. Divine. Divine to Ricks. And Stapleton turns beautifully. And fires one. Diving header away by Martin. This is Talbot. And Arsenal have got everybody pushed forward now. Pat Rice. Can they make the pressure pay? Divine. Brady, Ricks, and that was Ray Stewart, who's really been a very accomplished defender this season for West Ham since coming from Dundee United. It's given them a meaner edge at the back. Brady. Free kick to West Ham. Oh, now it's gone uh, to Arsenal, in fact. The referee pointing the other way. It'll be taken by Brady, who was fouled. Divine. Sunderland Brady again there's Ricks Torvitz made a good run forward and Ricks tries to get behind them Divine Willie Young at the back post but it was Billy Bonds flying through to head it Cross competes with Rice the ball runs free but I think Cross fouled him Rice gets Arsenal on their way again and they've taken hold of the match territorially now. O'Leary to Sunderland. Good following up as well and Willie Young's on the end of this. That's a corner. And the player that really put Willie Young off there was Alvin Martin and he got the worst of it. It was a nasty clash of heads. David O'Leary joined the attack in this Arsenal movement. The two centre-backs actually were involved. O'Leary came up on the outside to help Sunderland to have an option. And watch the jump here between Martin and Young, which results in both players getting a head injury. But these are anxious moments for West Ham because Arsenal have taken hold of the second half and Pat Rice continues to urge them forward. And Parks, like picking a plum off a tree there, really. The ball right off Willie Young's head. This goalkeeper's got such a tremendous range with those uh, big hands of his. Willie Young, this, oh, it would have been Allen, but West Ham have just lost their way for a few minutes. Here's Stapleton, and Arsenal seem to be finding theirs. Price, Torbett again is well forward. Divine, Brady. Still Brady, look at that. The cross is long, it's too long for Stapleton, but Devonshire, not under any immediate pressure, put the ball behind for a corner. which will be taken by Ricks. Oh, and this time, uh, I think Young foul parks. I must say that the referee, George Courtney, has been very close to the decisions that have mattered, and he's had no hesitation at all in awarding free kicks for that sort of foul. Just got a glimpse of the Arsenal bench there with the possibility of Sammy Nelson being used later on if they don't equalise. Here's Stapleton. There goes Talbot. Billy Bonds across. Billy Bonds, it seems to grow in stature as the years go by.
David Cross. Little flick inside for Stuart Pearson. O'Leary in the way. Pearson to Brooking. Brady gets back to challenge Brooking. What about that for work rate? Now, can he find Stapleton? Alvin Martin was always favourite. And he gets the ball back. Leaving it for Bonds. Cross has got Brooking in a good position. He's got uh, Devonshire making a break out on the left wing. Pearson is the man nearer in. And that was a tackle by O'Leary, but the referee made what I thought was a good decision there in that O'Leary, to me, played the ball. See what you think about this. Brooking feeds it through, and O'Leary, he starts a bit behind uh, Pearson, but it did seem to me as if he made a legitimate attempt to go for the ball, and Pearson's fall didn't fool the referee. Here's Devine. Brady. Now David Price, who's been very good in his supporting role. He's always looked to help the build-up, but O'Leary's mistake has given Paul Allen a little break. And Arsenal, as they push forward, which indeed they must in their position, could just leave gaps for West Ham to exploit on the counter and Pat Jennings has virtually been a spectator so far in the second half good long kick from him Sunderland, Price again good work by Price here's Devine Rice has come into the attack on the far side, number two. David O'Leary is supporting. Stapleton climbing. Header out was by uh, Martin. And Jeff Pike waiting for players to get forward, and that's not too easy for West Ham at the moment. Here's Allen. A scramble between uh, three players and Allen sorted that out beautifully. Pike, the usual cultured West Ham ball with the outside of the foot, nicely played to open up the game to Lampard. Look at Billy Bond steaming up outside him. Three waiting in the centre for a cross from the captain. There it goes off Pat Rice corner. West Ham's second corner of the match this is. Sammy Nelson is getting ready to play a part. Here's Devonshire. Brooking. Floated. Young and Bonds. Corner again. This is Brooking. Pike. Stewart. Came on Sunderland and he hooked it away before Martin could make contact. And Devonshire will just ward off Ricks and find Lampard. Arsenal are coming out looking for a possible offside here. Lampard is pausing and now he's going to try and spring the trap himself. Brooking is feeding cross on the far side. O'Leary's up first. Colbert. Brady and the FA Cup holders Arsenal still trail by one goal to nil. the situation 1-0 to West Ham with 15 minutes gone in the second half and Bonds is giving everything a little too much there perhaps in an attempt to keep the score the way it is Brady finds O'Leary Brady again that came off Pike and Brady's gone on Side netting. One of those shots that some of the fans in different parts of the ground think might have gone in, but in fact, the wrong side of the post. But Brady got a little deflection off Jeff Pike there and went on, although I would think Phil Parks had it covered anyway, had it been going inside. And now a substitution by Arsenal. A very different one to last year. But Sammy Nelson, the man who was left out of the side, experienced Irish international, 
will come on and John Devine, the man who was preferred to him, has gone off because Arsenal presumably want Nelson's attacking flair on the left-hand side, his ability to get forward on his natural left foot to give them more options up front. So, Devine is off and Nelson is on. Brian Talbot and Brookings goal still separates the two sides in a match in which West Ham have met Arsenal in every department of the game Brooking again now Ricks looks for Sunderland in the way Bonds Boss has made a run across goal here he comes but out again by Talbot Nelson's first touch Sunderland Ricks Stapleton Sunderland has made a run inside if he can find him Martin is in the way West Ham's player of the year Alvin Martin given away by Ray Stewart straight to Ricks Arsenal throw Brooking wasn't too sure about that decision but it's been given against him now what difference I wonder can uh, Sammy Nelson make here experienced player Willie Young has gone forward and Nelson's got a very long throw in they go it's going to come out to Price and Allen with the header only as far as Talbot Talbot looking for Brady here's Young Brady Brooking is tackling Brady goes down free kick combination really there of uh, Brooking and Pike that brought Brady down And a free kick to Arsenal. Well, the ward's got to be right from that position. There are five men in it. Talbot shoots. Oh, well held by Parks. Not where Stapleton was in case it rebounded. Shot by Brian Talbot that watched the goalkeeper hold on because Arsenal had a man there just in case the ball bounced back. Good goalkeeping by Parks. Three kicks to Arsenal. And Arsenal have commanded the second half. They've got all the possession all the territorial advantage but can they turn it into a goal and cancel out the lead which West Ham have held since the 13th minute free kick the other way Terry Neal smoking and uh, Don Howe to his right very impassive this is Brooking for West Ham Pearson, Devonshire. Pearson is following up here, supporting the attack. It's his ball into Allen. Oh, that's beautifully done by the 17-year-old. Oh, and that was a marvellous piece of vision, really. It may have looked as if it was way over the bar, which it was, but I think he sensed that Pat Jennings was well off his line, which, if I'm not mistaken, he was. When I say well off, he was far enough off for Allen to have a go. And he, look, he's on the six-yard line there. And Allen, well, he, he skied it. But it was nice to see a lad of 17 prepared to try that in a cup final. Stay put in to Sunderland. And now it's Ricks. Ricks to Brady. This is O'Leary, Rice. Oh, and the Arsenal players stood and watched as Bonds took that. Young to Brady. O'Leary, every Arsenal player now pushed into attack by Nelson. Up goes Sunderland, it's going to fall for Graham Ricks, and even Nelson joins the attack now. 
Here he comes. This is where they want him. Out on the left. Tolbert's in there. So though was Devonshire. West Ham forced now to bring everybody back. And it's a period of examination for their defence. This is Willie Young. Rice. Brady. And that's Allen. Oh, this is a fine piece of play by the youngster. That's Brooking. Oh, and that's also good from him. Pike. West Ham with five players forward. Still Jeff Pike. Randolph Nelson, who's got it back now. A promising move by West Ham on the break. Jeff Pike very much involved. It's Brady. Way through the second half still West Ham lead by one goal to nil threatening to become the third second division side to win the cup in eight seasons but Arsenal still with plenty of time to deny them that Arsenal have played their last card in a sense by bringing on Sammy Nelson on this side of the field number 12 Looks now for Stapleton. Arsenal throw. Nelson's long throw being used again. Cox is well aware of it. This is Brady. Nelson again. Sunderland's flick on. O'Leary's headed back. Sunderland again, Price is in there, Oof. so was Martin just, then Devonshire, then Pearson, they're all defending now for West Ham, they've got to, Ricks, Young, and the break could be on, Devonshire with Pearson to his left and crossed through the centre, there's Pearson, but Arsenal have got six men back, it's Pearson on the run, fired across, but... Pearson, uh, the scorer of a goal for Manchester United against Liverpool here in 77. But Brian Torbett urging Arsenal forward once more. O'Leary is coming out the back four constantly now. Bryce. Brady. O'Leary. Rice can have this. So can Sunderland, O'Leary, and it was uh, Lampard in the way. Ball actually didn't go out of play, and Pearson with a nice touch creates something for Brooklyn. Oh, look at that, it's just a bit... <laughs> Nelson and Pike, and Pike wins it, and Cross just couldn't get into it. And West Ham lost the chance of a good, sharp counter thrust there. Stapleton. Brady. Oh, he's lost it. There was a foul by Brady. He held back at Alan Devonshire, who actually won the ball from him in the first place. And here's Brooking. Twenty minutes to go in the FA Cup final of 1980. And the second division side are still in front. John Lyle's team have held on to that lead and defended well. Alan. And the bubbles song booms out from the tunnel end. Well, the line there is just like a dream. They fade and die, and West Ham will be hoping that's what they won't do in the last 20 minutes. In this extreme heat, it's Brooking. Lampard joins the attack. Cross is in there, offside. Offside. Frank Lampard 
might have been offside even there when the ball was first played and certainly as it was curled in the flag was up anyway could have been against cross but either way it was offside and Alvin Martin is the man down here's Jimmy Hill well with Alvin Martin on the floor I think it's time to play a tribute to the tremendous game he's played in the heart of West Ham's defence this afternoon he's hardly put a foot wrong and they'll sorely miss him if he has to go off but really West Ham have lost the initiative and they've really lost the uh, capability to counter-attack and Trevor Brooking who was so marvellous in the first half seems to have lost that dominating influence in the middle of the field and Cross maybe not with the energy to do quite the running he was doing first half and it's made such a difference it's enabling Arsenal to put all the pressure that they can muster on West Ham and in the end the goal will be inevitable but uh, Sammy Nelson extraordinary twist in modern football they bring on a fullback as an attacking move and that's to add uh, an extra thrust really to Brady and uh, Ricks on the left hand side of the field so you should see Nelson number 12 pushing forward as one of the main chances of Arsenal getting back in the game for the moment it's Billy Bonds trying to get a header on it and it was cleared in the end by the man who's now fit again Alvin Martin received prolonged attention there but he's back in action and here's the opposite number five O'Leary Brady now what can he create for Arsenal in the last 18 minutes or so here's Ricks this is Willie Young Price Tolbert and West Ham again keeping their cool at the back and just shutting down the space as Tolbert tried to play the ball through Pearson and here's Young David Cross challenging Pearson gets up again and again by Young oh and West Ham have got some space again with Pearson on the left and Sammy Nelson the most delicate of back passes there difficult skill that when you're facing your own goal but he's got Arsenal on the attack here's Brady fouled by uh, Paul Allen and the referee awards Arsenal the free kick Allen has chased Brady and made life hard for him. Still at 17, savouring this big occasion. Sunderland. Oh, that was a good piece of goalkeeping. Parks making it clear to Lampard, but it was his ball. And those West Ham fans beginning to think now with 15 minutes to go that the cut could be on its way to East London for the first time since 1975. But when Arsenal have delivered so much in the last quarter of games this season, what can you say about what could happen in the last 15 minutes? Talbot. Price. Brady. Nelson to Ricks. Ricks has got Brady square. He's trying to take them all on. And Brady shoots. The referee had already blown for a foul on Ricks. Free kick to Arsenal. The last time from here, Torbett had a shot at goal. Brady takes, too long for Willie Young. Well, West Ham, of course, have got a great chance of going into Europe if they were to win here. Arsenal have got to lift themselves, not just in this last 15 minutes, but also in time for Wednesday's Cup Winners' Cup final, because there's an awful lot at stake with about 14 minutes to go and West Ham's flags held high they lead 1-0 Cross a nice header to Brooking here's Pike 
Booking again. Booking found a way through. And a flick on by Devonshire. It's out now in the end. Devonshire got ahead to that uh, nicely curled cross by Brooking. But Brooking makes room for crosses even when you don't think it exists. He got his cross round O'Leary and it was flicked on as Devonshire came across the goal. Nelson to Brady. Looking for Sunderland. And Lampard came across to block the route to goal. Well, there'll be some weary legs now with the hot afternoon and this sapping Wembley pitch taking its toll. David O'Leary in particular seems to me to be feeling the pace. He's got uh, one sock rolled right down and maybe uh, nursing a bit of a knock. Here's Talbot. And at the moment it's cross on the ball for West Ham to Paul Allen. Stuart Pearson has played most of the second half on the left-hand side of the attack and he was stopped there by Ricks. But O'Leary is the man who appears to be hobbling a little bit. And Arsenal, of course, have used their substitute. Pearson. Devonshire. John Howe trying to lift Arsenal for one supreme effort now in the last 12 minutes or so to force extra time. Here's Brooking though as West Ham start to find spaces again. Pearson. And now Jeff Pike. Ray Stewart's moved up inside. West Ham still prepared to come forward. Still Pike on the ball. Pike shot right across the goal. And a goal kick. Well, I wonder now if Arsenal's weariness, which they've done so much to mask in the last few weeks, really is beginning to take its effect in this, their 67th match of the season and their 26th cup tie. They're a goal down. Can they save it in the last 11 minutes? Talbot. Young. Pat Rice. David Cross got in. O'Leary. Brooking is back there defending against Brady. That was his header to Lampard. And West Ham are still denying Arsenal the time and space to create chances. Jennings has not had anything to do really in the second half. But to be fair, Parks at the other end has not been forced to make more than one really extended save. That was the one from Ricks. And the free kick from Torbett, not to forget that. There have been two telling efforts from Arsenal, which he's dealt with admirably. Here's Brooking. Pearson's got to run through if he can find him. He's gone for Pike instead, and the ball carrying just a little bit too far for Jeff Pike. But Brooking has given West Ham tremendous service this afternoon, not just in a creative sense, but also getting back behind the ball as well, which Devonshire is doing now also. Well, those are the delighted West Ham supporters. The afternoon still going their way, with under 10 minutes left now. Sunderland. Stapleton. Stapleton's turn. Watched by Martin and by little Allen who gets the ball away and shows good awareness. Header though by Nelson. Now Young. Nelson again.
is Talbot. Brady turns and gets a free kick. Lampard just challenging Brady there. Brady again. Talbot. Pat Rice. Away by Bonds. Well, again, everybody is sandwiched into the West Ham half as O'Leary finds Rice. Socks down now. O'Leary again. Talbot trying to help it on, and again, Brooking denied him. And West Ham here could have a terrific break if they play the ball. It is Devonshire. Pearson wanted it played earlier, in fact. Brooking has now made a run through. Still Devonshire. Now Pearson. Pike. And now Pearson crosses over on the far post. This is Stewart. He's moved inside a bit now. And in fact, uh, Jennings coming and playing the part of the fullback as well. And what a good ball from Pat Jennings to Liam Brady. He's got Sunderland, Stapleton and Talbot up with him. Still Brady. Tackled by uh, Brooking again. Oh, what an all-round performance by the England player. Talbot. Rick speeds Sunderland. Billy Bonds tackle on Alan Sunderland. Ricks again for Arsenal. Seven minutes left. Still Ricks. And West Ham and everybody back in defence again. It's going to be a back to the wall effort now by them. Ricks retrieves. Arsenal have still got six yellow shirts hovering on the edge of the area. But Rice's ball nowhere near good enough to find them. And Cross here could have a run on. He's just paused and waited for support, and here's Allen. Bonds making a run from the back on the far side. Devons is with him, Stewart's in the centre. Young is there, it's run loose. It's Stewart to save Jennings, and the flag's up anyway. A player was offside at the last. Pat Jennings called into action there to make a familiar save with his feet, but it was Billy Bonds that made the break. He tried to pull in Ray Stewart, and as the ball ran loose to Stewart, Jennings saved with his foot. And look at the player on the floor, he's behind the goalkeeper even, so he must be offside. My feeling is that Arsenal is struggling in terms of fitness with O'Leary. I think he's possibly pulled a calf muscle. He's certainly been... Oh, a bad ball back by Cross. Stapleton, Brady. Brady tries to take them all on, and the tackle was fair enough, the ball was played. They were queuing up to take him there. Cross, whose mistake that was, makes another one. Young, Talbot. And Stewart this time covers. Now Price. And Stewart won it well. Allen. And West Ham are threatening to score a second on the break. This is Brooking. Pearson. Still Pearson. And Sammy Nelson doing well enough. Well, we've got about five minutes left. And just remember what happened in the last five minutes last year before we draw too many conclusions from that position. Last year we had three goals in the last five minutes between Arsenal and Manchester United. And Arsenal here have a free kick. Brady chasing. Martin trying to hold him off. Corner to Arsenal. And the team whose powers of recovery have surpassed almost anybody else's this season have now got to try and snatch something in the last five minutes. Price with the corner. Well cleared though by the defence. Pat Rice was the man hanging back and uh, West Ham have now got time to come out and push up if they so wish. Terry Neal knows now there's not very long to go. John Howe even looking a little despondent next to him. Willie Young is in the attack. It's loose. 
it's Lampard, it's Brooking. What else can you say? Surely, for many, many people, the man of the match. And that ball from Stewart has found Cross, who's got Pearson up with him and Allen. Can he shake off Ricks? It's a tired looking cross, really, perhaps, but uh, the pressure's still on Arsenal because here's Devonshire. Pearson. players waiting there are three minutes to go and that was another clearance initially by Brooking Rice's cross and Lampard's header Brooking again nice ball Devonshire Brooking again oh that's beautifully done Allen now can the 17 year old take them on he can Allen is through oh what a pity a cynical foul by Willie Young deserving of the yellow card it got a 17 year old might have made a storybook finish there and that was an absolutely direct chance of a shot on goal and spoiled by the worst sort of professional foul just look at that Jimmy Hill I'm sure will have something to say about that later and it's going to be a free kick to West Ham about 22 yards from goal It hit the wall, corner. But really there, the punishment didn't fit the crime. All West Ham got was a free kick which cannoned off the end of the wall. But still, they're on the attack. They're leading 1-0 and they've only got two minutes to survive. Devonshire. side against Cross but it wouldn't have mattered because Arsenal actually could have played on there John Lyle knows how close they are now to another victory for the underdogs and a place in Europe Martin's header Young Rice Ricks there's still time it's Young's header in but they're just not finding each other in attack Arsenal the understanding seems to have broken down in the last third of the field and in a sense that's made it easier for West Ham to defend here's Pearson Cross and again West Ham bring players out of defence into attack Stewart Pike lovely football from West Ham Stewart's cross David Cross letting it run on enough from Stuart Pearson well I make it now the last minute of normal time and there'll be some feverish activity on the bench checking of the watches as Stapleton comes forward to try and deny a romantic FA Cup trial for second division West Ham the holders grip on the trophy is within seconds of being loose time in three years and East London celebrates West Ham the side who've never abandoned their attacking principles from the second division win the FA Cup and earn a place in the European Cup Winners Cup next season a match which they took hold of early on by getting a goal in the 13th minute and defended well to protect that goal and indeed towards the end might even have added to it Trevor Brooking was the scorer and possibly the man of the match for many people Alvin Martin consoles Graham Ricks and everywhere you look inside Wembley the flags are claret and blue and the smiling faces belong to men like John Lyle 
congratulations to David Cross and West Ham have now been to Wembley three times since the war and they've won the cup every time no wonder he embraced Billy Bonds what a match he had and Brooking even more so Brooking who stooped header scored the only goal Albert Walker in the background there one of the uh, West Ham backroom boys long association with the club and I wonder what the Arsenal players are feeling now because with the European Cup Winners Cup final only five days away Pat Rice might well be wondering can he lift this side again and I wonder what David O'Leary's position will be as well because he looked injured to me at the end but at the moment it's all about the winners as West Ham make their way towards the Royal Box and the last time Billy Bonds went up those steps to collect the cup five years ago he had a beard well he hasn't got a beard this time but the smile above that chin will be just the same these for a cup winning captain and Bonds who joined West Ham United 13 years ago next week a fitting time for him to come forward and meet the Duchess of Kent and receive the most famous trophy in football Billy Bonds lifts the FA Cup for West Ham And East London delirious Frank Lampard another long serving player Ray Stewart in his first season Jeff Pike who played so well having been brought in when he was Alvin Martin shows his medal Stewart Pearson well he won at Wembley with Manchester United and now he wins again with West Ham Paul Allen the youngest ever FA Cup finalist at Wembley has a winner's medal as does David Cross the substitute Paul Brush also gets a medal. Alan Devonshire, Phil Parks, whose two saves were vital from Ricks and Talbot in the second half, and Trevor Brooking, whose goal just symbolised a marvellous performance. The West Ham chairman, Leonard Kearns, in shot there. Rob Jenkins kissing the cup. And it's Arsenal this time, a very different Arsenal from a year ago. Beaten 1-0 as they were by Ipswich in 78. And this time, Pat Rice leads the losers and Arsenal's problems now are to get over this and try and hoist themselves for next Wednesday the formalities of receiving the losers medals a journey that's never really enjoyed by players on the losing side this year you'll notice no exchanging of shirts uh, on the pitch it's been banned by the FA so Arsenal still in their yellow John Devine who came off David Price who worked hard but with little reward Frank Stapleton couldn't find a way through nor even could Liam Brady today Alan Sunderland was closely marked they brought on Sammy Nelson but he couldn't find the openings down the left side and O'Leary appeared to me to be struggling at the end with injury but in the claret and blue caps 17 years old Paul Allen in the centre Jeff Pike on the far side and nearest us with the top of the trophy Ray Stewart go on the lap of honour the scarves and the caps claret and blue because West Ham changed their normal colours today but white has proved lucky for them it beats Everton in the semi-final and with a teddy bear at the front West Ham celebrate the FA Cup win very much a team effort by a club that has always believed in playing the game the right way Arsenal are going round on the traditional loser's lap of honour and uh, Terry Neal and Don Howe, professionals to the last, walk away knowing that there's a crowd of Arsenal fans 
wanting to pay tribute as well and knowing there's another match of importance to their club on Wednesday whereas today belongs to West Ham John Lyle took over as manager from Ron Greenwood in 1974 being congratulated there by Bob Wilson and John now has led his side to Wembley for two FA Cup finals and won them both and the last time they went into the Cup Winners Cup they got to the final of that as well and Terry Neal sportingly applauding the contribution of the supporters and one mustn't overlook that because so many Arsenal fans will be in Brussels next Wednesday but as Don Howe does likewise and the disappointed Arsenal players make their way round the lesson is there again from FA Cup Finals, as David Coleman was saying in the build-up, it's about who plays on the day. And on the day, West Ham rose to the occasion, and Arsenal couldn't make their first division pedigree play a significant part. Devonshire and Bonds and Brooking, wherever you looked in the side, somebody was playing well. Indeed, every West Ham player made a contribution and deserves that sort of ovation in the sunshine at Wembley. Trevor Brooking, I won't say he puts the lid on his career because he's still got the European Championship and he'll go on playing for a while yet. But when you think of his contribution over the years to West Ham and England, Brooking is a fitting scorer of the winning goal in an FA Cup final. And it's nice too for senior men like Stuart Pearson and David Cross to have a day like this to remember and Frank Lampard too of course well Terry Neal typically manages a smile John Lyle's tactics have been proved successful. He made a decision about the team to play Pike and not Brush and put his faith in West Ham's best form of football philosophy, which is going forward. And this they did in the first half and then showed in the second that they can also defend. That's a very reassuring thing for that uh, man in the picture there because John Lyle, over the years, has had to live with the fact that people have accused West Ham of being fragile at the back. But today, the players defended expertly for him and won the cup. And another shot there for Paul Allen. Trevor Brooking and Frank Lampard. Well, you couldn't ask for two players who epitomise the West Ham spirit better than those two, apart from the skipper. The Academy of Football, they called it, down in London's East End. And there have been people who've taken a cynical view of that over the years. But West Ham are a club and a side who prove they can rise to the occasion. They came here to play the holders, the side so vastly experienced on the big occasion, Arsenal, and they've defeated them. the view uh, from up above Pat Holland in the picture there who didn't get a place in the side he was injured in the semi-final but he too deserves a mention because this is a club in every sense Jeff Pike one of the West Ham players who's come through the East London production line That'll give them great satisfaction that homebred players were involved. But John Lyle has brought well too, the fans will tell you that. And certainly the performance in the second half when he was called upon of Phil Parks will be mentioned when this match is replayed. He only had two important saves to make, but he made them both and denied Arsenal. 
so again the tunnel end as it's called at Wembley is lucky for the supporters it always seems that the fans at that end of the stadium are the ones whose team wins the cup it's happened now several years three in the last three years in succession in fact and above the players tunnel the East Londoners celebrate as Pearson kisses his winner's medal the second of Stuart Pearson's career he's got one uh, loser's medal as well but the gold winner's medal is the one that players cherish and many professionals play for a lifetime and don't win one of those